On this day, 85 years ago, shattered glass littered the streets of many a German cities and villages. Flames ripped through synagogues as German police and firefighters stood nearby, watching the destruction without taking any action. Cries echoed through the night as women and children fearfully watched their sons, husbands, and fathers being beaten and taken away to unknown locations. Kristallnacht, Night of Broken Glass, marked a turning point for many Jews throughout Germany and Austria as it was the first large-scale pogrom issued by the Nazi regime. Many Jews all over Europe began to fear that the anti-Semitism that defined the Nazi party was more widespread and violent than previously believed, and was at a scale of which they had never imagined. This realization prompted roughly 115,000 Jews to immigrate from the Reich, Germany, Austria, and the Sudetenland, with thousands more placed on waiting lists for immigration visas. Unfortunately, very few on the waiting lists, and even those that did previously immigrate, would survive the impending Holocaust. The events of November 9th through 10th, 1938, marked a rapid growth of horror for the Jews. The passivity with which the German population responded to the violence against their Jewish neighbors signaled to the Nazi regime that the public was complicit with the Nazi acts of violence. Radical anti-Semitic policy that had been growing for the past six years was brought to the forefront by the official party. The Nazi regime became successfully able to dehumanize and isolate the Jews from their fellow Germans through these policies that effectively marked the Jews as the inhumane other. Jews were barred from all public schools and universities. Their jobs and companies were taken from them. Their personal property was stolen and they were required to wear a Star of David on their clothing. These extreme actions would become more and more radicalized throughout the remaining seven years of the Nazi regime and would end with at least six million Jews and millions of other minorities killed during the Holocaust. We would now like to present the testimony of Walter Summers as he recounts the events of Kristallnacht. I was with a co-worker, uh, a very friendly young man who was also a member of the Nazi uh, Hitler Youth, and he had a swastika flag on his bicycle, and I had a black, white, and red flag on my bicycle. And we got along extremely well. And so, uh, as we came to the center of the city, of the downtown area of the city of Hamburg, uh, there were mobs of dirty looking people uh, uh, with crowbars and sledgehammers smashing display windows of retail stores belonging to Jewish merchants. So you might ask, how did they know that they were owned by Jewish, by Jewish people? Well, in, in around Easter time, 1934, the Nazis decided about a week before Easter uh, that all Jewish retail stores should be so identified. And each Jewish retail store had to have a sign on the window that this was a Jewish story. And they were hoping to keep people from shopping on those stories. At that time he had sold several of the stories, mm -hmm. and I think there were about seven or eight stories left mm -hmm. over in the city of Frankfurt and surrounding town. Uh, they were destroyed. Merchandise was thrown out of the street. Uh, that's what happened on that night. And my father was arrested sure. and by a friendly police officer uh, on the night of, uh, uh, it was a Thursday night, November, November 8, 1938. And uh, the police officer was an extremely friendly man, told my father to take his time and put on some warm clothing that he had strict orders to bring him down to the police station. And so, and then he also told my father, do I have something to eat? And there's a picture of the policeman, my mother and my father, 
sitting in the kitchen in Frankfurt, Germany, around 11 o'clock at night, having an early breakfast. He took my father down to the police station. Uh, there were several other German Jewish men waiting, and eventually, maybe an hour or two hours later, they were turned over to a detachment of stormtroopers and marched to a railroad station, put into a freight car, and shaped to the uh, to one of the concentration camps. And <clears throat> that was uh, on, on that Thursday night, uh, November 8th. And so the next day, I, well, yeah, I stayed with a very nice uh, uh, landlady, a Christian landlady, where I rented a room. And when she heard what was going on in town, she said, you suppose you could move someplace else? And right then and there, we had a phone call from friends of ours who were Romanian citizens who lived almost next door. And they said, pack up your stuff and move in with it. And so the next three nights, I spent sleeping in their place. And so the next day, I called my mother, and she told me what had happened. And she asked me to return to Frankfurt. And on the train, I was surrounded by four stormtroopers in brown uniform. And we had a very nice, friendly conversation. And when I got off in Frankfurt, I had my bicycle in a freight car. He insisted on helping me put my big suitcase on the back of the carrier, of the bicycle carrier, and shook my hands and wished me well, just to give you an idea. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, <clears throat> I came back home, and my mother was in very sad shape at that time. And it was about a day or two days later, we got our immigration papers from America. And with those in hand, we went, with the help of some quote-unquote Nazi friends, we went to some offices, government offices, and got my dad out of the camp. He was in bad shape. Um, his ha hair had been shaven, and he had the flu, and it took him about two weeks to recover. As we look back on the events of 85 years ago, it is important to speak up now more than ever as anti-Semitism is growing around the world. The Jewish population is currently being targeted through means of severe discrimination, escalating violence, and calls for their extermination. As millions of people around the world shockingly support the terrorist attacks on October 7th led by Hamas, we are experiencing an unprecedented attack upon the Jewish population in the United States. As discrimination, violence, and hate continue to rise, we must allow the events of the past to serve as a reminder to raise our voices against oppression in the present. Continue to make never again, never again, and fight for tikkun olam. We will conclude by lighting this candle in memory of those who faced oppression by the Nazi regime on November 9, 1938.